Hey Tom. Hey Nick. How are you doing? We're good. So you've got the nice treated room for the new uh, Key 7 speakers. Um, I remember seeing the launch of the original Key 3 in Frankfurt some time back and obviously I know they've been going great guns since then so this is a brand new speaker for you guys right? That is an absolute uh, brand new speaker that we've uh, only launched to the public at NAMM show back in the day and it's the first time we're showing it to the pro public in the UK and yeah we're happy to have them brought here to Gearfest and um, show them to people and so far the reception has been great people have been loving it and people have been asking us for a long time to have something like the Key 3s, yeah. but simply a way more affordable and also in a smaller footprint. And yeah, because uh, these originals, they're big boys. They're, they're priced, you know, top end, I would say. You know? Yeah, priced absolutely top end, especially if you have them in like a, a high-end mastering context with the BXT extension, that's even higher priced. So to the top part only is the Key 3. The full stack is the BXT extension. Um, the, the unique thing about this is actually if you add on the BXT at a later point, you'll just uh, plug them in and reload to different firmware and the whole thing becomes a completely new floor standard designed speaker. Um, but still, this is super high end um, in terms of sonics, but also in terms of price range, obviously. So the most thing, um, most request out there was, yeah. can you do something like the Key 3 that still has sort of a cardioid dispersion response and takes care of most of the problems of the room or makes it easier to place them in the room. And uh, there's our answer. There we go. So, so these are also uh, two-way speakers. Active. No. Oh, they're not. <laughs> no, they're Three. not. They have uh, woofers to the sides. Ah. Um, and they are actually the same idea behind the cardioid design as the Key 3s. So we have uh, um, a tweeter, a mid-range, and the side woofers and the side woofers and the tweeter actually work in tandem and form a cardioid so the the actual dispersion of the speaker stays the same down to about 130 140 hertz and only below that frequency it becomes omnidirectional right why well, yeah i mean because you do really clever stuff with uh, these got dsp on them and you absolutely so they, they that everything is kind of very accurately phase aligned so that's that's the sort of magic Exactly, Source, right? exactly. So the, the DSP is at the heart of the speaker and um, you basically, each drive unit has its own DA converter, its own amplifier channel, so it's all dis discreetly controlled. And that way, we not only can we do the, the cardioid control or the control the dispersion into a, a cardioid pattern, uh, which usually you don't get um, in, in, in most pro speakers, but also, we, as whenever we have the option to afford a longer latency, so in a mixing mastering scenario, we can also time and phase align the whole thing. Right. Um, meaning you actually have simply two modes when you're working, a low latency mode and an exact mode. And in exact mode, they have a perfectly time aligned impulse response. And as soon as you're tracking or so editing, Right, so you've been using that for sort of mixing and, and making qualitative decisions. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Interesting. So all of this happens on board the speakers, right? There's it no, does. Th yeah, okay. It does, yes. And, and the, the, the other good thing about this is that you basically have your whole monitor control built into the whole thing, and you can remote control it from this key control, meaning you, you even have like um, a USB interface built into it, so if you're not using an audio interface, right. um, you would use that. Otherwise, you would simply ha make sure that you catch the a digital output from your audio interface. Right, so you, you get stay the best, completely yeah. in the digital domain, so you don't have any extra conversion steps. Go into the speakers or into the key control. So is that a Cat Five connection to the speakers? Is that what? That is. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is not a network, but this is a proprietary connection. What's really new about the Key 7 and what we did for the first time um, is really that in the next update that will be available somewhere in September, October, we will also add a streaming module to the speaker that will be just a software update. So if you're using Spotify or Tidal Connect, you can actually put them in your network or in your Wi-Fi, home Wi-Fi, right. and have it just connect like, like uh, you would with your tiny little Sonos speaker, for example. 
Yeah, only it won't go. Yes, let's not talk about Sonos. Though. <laughs> uh, um, so these, I mean, obviously, there'd been not much point in us listening to them. I did listen to them earlier, so mm -hmm. I can understand. Yeah, they've, one thing that's really interesting is very, very extended low end for such a sort of yes. for size going on. It's the, it was the same for these when I first heard them. Almost Absolutely. like almost PA like PA, uh, yes. low end and very uh, yeah. tightly controlled. Stereo imaging as well, right? It's a closed box design, so there's uh, there's no ports, no transmission line, nothing. It's a closed box design, and like I said, we can control every drive unit individually. So the DSP actually takes care of the whole frequency response and and keeps that in check. And every speaker that's leaving the factory is calibrated, um, so we can make sure we have a perfectly uh, straight and flat frequency response. If you want that, if you want something like a house sound or house curve or have them balanced differently to your liking, you still have the option in the key control. Right, so you can adjust it to, yeah. Exactly. If you have done um, um, room EQ before or done measurements of your room and you want to filter out like two or three more resonance modes, um, uh, you don't need any external gear. So that's also built in. You have about eight. Um, uh, eight filters per speaker that you can employ, um, which are completely individually configurable. So, what and what's uh, is there is there control on the back or is it just networking power and sort of attenuation going on on the back of these? There's a there's a cap touch control panel on the back, but that you actually would only need if you really install them somewhere else or if you don't use them with the key control. Um, once you connect the controller, everything is available from the menu. And um, in the future, as soon as the Wi-Fi and uh, streaming update comes on, there'll also be an app coming, uh, so you can configure the whole thing from an iOS app or actually from your browser um, on your computer. So, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because there's the, the price, there's a sort of subset. It's like a kind of Venn diagram of high-end hi-fi yeah. and high-end uh, studio. And Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've checked a few high-end studio systems mm -hmm. And they seem to fall in two camps. You know, you've got the very clinical mm -hmm. uh, kind of, yeah. uh, maybe not so musically fun to listen to, but then you've That's got the true. ones that are also clean, that have got the clarity, with, but also make music a joy to listen to. How would you define Absolutely. that those two subsets when it comes to the keys? What what's what were you aiming for? We're, we're definitely aiming for actually to to um, enable both of those situations. But the, the thing is, if you build a speaker that's really face coherent and that has a super flat frequency response, and you do that correctly and you don't introduce any issues in your DSP design or what, whatever you're doing there, um, it actually becomes a very musical speaker. So not only because you're deploying DSP technology does mean you have to take great care um, to to make it too analytical, but it's it's actually something that sort of um, is the result of whatever we're doing, doing this correctly and avoiding any mistakes while we employ the, the DSP correction, and you up end up with a very musical system, so musical that um, until some some time ago, we actually sold a l uh, or a, l a lot more stuff. To the to the hi-fi world, the audio file, right? The, and the audio files. So they picked up early on those, and the key threes were more left like like the the secret tip around the the high-end engineers. And um, in the meanwhile, that has changed. So we're probably one of the very few companies that sell one product to both markets alike. Yeah, yeah, um, I was going to say, yeah. And and we absolutely welcome that, and we're happy to do that. I'm sure, I'm um, sure you are. Um, where, so yeah. you say these are uh, more affordable, obviously the Key 3 uh, and the Key 7s. What yeah. sort of price, because I know the Key 3s are, you know, I know they're expensive yeah. or, or they're a lot of money, but that's because exactly. that's what so they cost. So in the UK, the, the I, I have to look it up myself. So the that's Key right. 3 is, the Key 3 only is about, I think, 15,700. Is that, um, a, is that a pair or? That, that's for the whole system, right, a pair, okay. including the control. Um, including VAT yeah. also, and it's 31,000, I think 500 for the complete stack for the Key 3 BXT system. And the Key 7 system will be 7,785, roughly, uh, street price, including VAT. And the controller. Pound, including the controller, 
and the two speakers, yes. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tom. You're welcome, Nick. Mm -hmm.